So some just general statistics around what's happening with Ethereum. Uh, one major player in Ethereum is Grayscale and their Ethereum Trust. Uh, they currently have about 3.2 million ETH uh, in the trust, which is nearly 3% of the total supply. Uh, Grayscale offers a closed end trust that uh, I think they intend to convert into an ETF over time, but it's one of the main ways that institutions that have higher regulatory requirements um, can get exposure to the Ethereum uh, investment. And in addition, um, you know, the AUM you can see on uh, this chart is somewhere around 8 billion, whereas the Bitcoin trust is uh, nearly four to five times larger than that. And so uh, from an investment perspective, it follows the trajectory, which I suspect it will. Um, you might see similar inflows of, of large investment into these Ethereum trusts. Uh, additionally, staking, which is a aspect of, of some blockchains consensus mechanisms and aspect of the new ETH 2.0 upgrade um, allows for people to effectively deposit um, ETH into a smart contract where it's essentially locked up or not tradable for a longer period of time. With the upgrade of ETH 2.0, there's been over $9 billion of ETH staked, um, which is over 3% of the total supply. Effectively, what this means is there's people with long-term commitments and long-term financial interest at scale committed to the development of Ethereum and unable to trade or sell the ETH that they have. Uh, so as a consequence, you have a smaller circulating supply, uh, which tends to be cause an increase in the price if you have an increase in demand and less supply. Um, sort of in a, a similar vein, you know, one of the primary uses of Ethereum is to lock it up into smart contracts for various DeFi applications. And so the prevalence of DeFi or of locked up ETH in smart contracts tends to correlate to a um, increase in the robustness and actual use of Ethereum. It's one thing just to buy it and hold it uh, to make additional money or speculate, but when people are actually using it for real use cases, it um, means that it actually has real utility and real value in a way that ensures it's more likely to be useful and valuable in the future. And so, as you can see from this chart, you know, the percent of Ethereum being used in real, real use cases is, is only growing. Next, another important statistic is uh, in about August of last year, we've seen enormous amounts of Ethereum being removed off of exchanges. Why does this matter? Is because you know, the primary way people are going to trade, buy or sell Ethereum is going to be through exchanges. And so if there's less available on exchanges, it suggests that people aren't looking to you know, sell at this hour or this day because it's not even in a place where it could be uh, easily sold. In some cases, people sell at OTC or trade it in, in larger volumes, but um, that is sort of an independent variable from how much is on exchange. Uh, the fact that even as the price goes up, more people are taking it off exchange uh, suggests long-term investment mindset and more of an institutional participation that isn't trying to do any day trading or, or make a quick buck. Additionally, um, we've seen that um, the just general, there's another statistic around uh, volume transfers either to or from exchanges. Another way to just visualize, you know, when things are read, effectively what you're seeing is a net loss of Ethereum off of exchanges. And so you can see on the whole, since uh, the middle of last year, there's been almost primarily uh, red or withdrawals off of exchanges. Again, this is just another indicator of long-term investment sentiment or uh, use in real Ethereum applications. Another interesting statistic around you know, institutional or what people refer to as whales in, in the crypto industry is uh, how many addresses contain 10,000 Ethereum or more. Uh, we've seen since November of last year that this number has continued to grow even in tandem with the growth of the price. Usually we expect that if the price grows, people would be selling to take profits. Um, but on the whole, we've seen an increase um, in 10,000 plus Ethereum wallet addresses. It's also important to note, you know, a lot of larger investors, exchanges, institutions, it's not like they keep all of their Ethereum in just a single place. And so um, this is a snapshot of just some of the people with large um, exposure to, to Ethereum. Right now, 10,000 Ethereum is, uh, as of this morning, about $26 million. And so these are you know, significant holders that also tend to uh, be committed for a longer time period and aren't so swayed by day-to-day -day fluctuations in price. Another aspect that shows the maturation or uh, growth of the Ethereum institutional markets is the growth of volume and open interest in the derivatives. 
uh, almost all of the derivatives for uh, Ethereum are occurring, trading is occurring on Deribit, which uh, comprises the red part of this graph. And as you can see, since uh, last year, there's been you know, hundreds of percent of growth in, in the open interest of Ethereum. So the number of contracts that are placed and have some kind of exposure to Ethereum. Um, what we tend to see with options or futures, uh, we'll have a couple more statistics about this is that uh, it expresses more uh, participation from institutions. It's a way to manage risk. It's a more sophisticated and complicated uh, way to trade within digital assets markets and um, suggest again that there's more people adding ways to get both Ethereum exposure and ways to protect on um, the downside. You tend to see also the composition of the options is changing from just long calls, which is more of a speculative investment to hedged uh, downside put protection. Uh, again, expressing even if you're a long ETH, uh, some interest in hedging downside uh, risk, which is again, more of an institutional behavior action. Uh, the same you'll see across options volumes, open interest volumes on futures and options, uh, a exponential growth in the interest that the last bar here is lower just because it's a snapshot uh, in the middle of the month, in the middle of the week. But nevertheless, uh, you can see there's uh, thousands of percent of growth over the last year. I think about 2,200% growth in Ethereum options volume over the last year uh, and only increasing uh, day by day. The same is um, you can see that Ethereum futures uh, aggregate open interest is continuing to grow significantly. Um, again, in line with the other statistics we've just shown, just suggests more institutional participation. Also the, you know, just opening up of these products in ways that mainstream investors can get participation all expresses more kind of open interest. And you know, similar to what our fund does, this ability to buy spot ETH and sell the future at a premium while it's trading in Contango uh, is a very popular trade on Bitcoin and Ethereum and um, is expressed through open interest in the futures market. Uh, additionally, you know, one thing you'd expect through more institutional participation is a general de decrease in realized volatility. So not uh, implied volatility, but the actual volatility that was found on markets. Uh, in this case, you could see it's, there's obviously wild swings and you could see a giant spike in March of, of 2020, which I think we all can remember that uh, period. But generally there's been a tightening of the volatility range and a decrease in realized volatility, which expresses that there's more participants, uh, more derivatives markets and more institutions that are uh, tightening the way that the asset behaves. Uh, lastly, I just want to say on, on my end that we just re really released a report on our website that has all this information and more with uh, a bunch of information written about it. You can see the domain here is 2prime.io dash the rise of institutional Ethereum investors. So I encourage you to go to the website, put in your email and name, and um, you can download the report for yourself.